Exciting week, I'm ones releasing its brand new software, Photo Raw 2022. I'll take you on a quick test drive and show you some of the cool new stuff in it. Well, hey everyone, Hudson here. Hope everyone is having a good fall, back to school, all that kind of stuff. My kids are uh, having a blast with school in person, which is fun to see. Um, before we jump in and talk about On One's brand new Photo Raw 2022, a couple quick announcements. One, the Milky Way course that I have long been promising is out, it's up, it's available for purchase, and you can find it at hudsonhenry.com slash Milky Way, and I'll put a link down in the video's description along with links to all of the stuff that I talk about today and all of the photo gear that I use and recommend. Uh, and those links help me out, so thanks so much for using them. Uh, I want to make sure that everyone's invited and feels welcome to the office hours on October 26th. Rick LePage, David Archer, and I are going to be taking off with three different groups of workshop students in Yellowstone, the Tetons, and Moab over the next several weeks. We're leaving on Tuesday. Uh, but when we come back, we're going to have an office hour. We're going to go through a gallery of your image submissions. So please sign up at hudsonhenry.com slash office hours for that free meeting. You can join us on Zoom or YouTube Live. You can submit your image uh, along with a question for the group of us. You know, we're, we're really looking for night sky images since this Milky Way course just, uh, just launched, but any images are just fine. So you can find the place to submit those images and sign up at hudsonhenry.com slash office hours. Again, that's going to be on October 26th, 10 a.m. Pacific. All right, so let's talk just a little bit about Om One's new software version, Photo Raw 2022. Actually, the day this video is going live, it's available for download. It's got some really cool new stuff in it, like a completely revamped export engine that lets you create really nice usable presets, as well as some cool new masking tool enhancements, sky uh, replacement built into it, smart sky replacement, which I was actually really surprised with how well it works. I'll showcase that. Uh, and also some, some, uh, some pretty cool, from my perspective, integration of no noise AI right into the raw processing engine of Photo Raw 2021 or 2022. And that means that you can take your raw file right through the image processor that you're working with as your, uh, as your main raw image editor, if you're working with Photo Raw 2022, and non-destructively do that kind of amazing AI noise reduction that no noise AI brings. And I'll showcase why I like that. Um, so let's jump in, let's take a look at the software. All right, so let's go ahead, let's fire up the brand new Photo Raw 2022. I love having my image as the splash screen is, is very, very honored to have that. Um, so the software is firing up. When I installed it, it kept all my preferences and extras and catalog folders and everything from Photo Raw 2021. That was very seamless. There you can see that image that they used uh, for the splash screen. And again, that's awesome. I'm very proud to have that. So, um, you know, let's jump in. I'll show you some of the cool new stuff that's integrated. You know, it's just skinned in here, you know, into this, this uh, same familiar photo raw user interface. There's just some interesting new things. You know, first and foremost, I'm actually going to kill the webcam for a sec so you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. Uh, one thing you'll notice right off the bat is down here you've got backup data and restore data. You can hit backup data, tell it a location that you want to back all of your sort of catalog information, the edits that you've done to photos, the previews, that kind of stuff. Uh, not the photos themselves, just the work that you've done, that sort of cataloged information. Um, and you can have it remind you to do that once a week or once a month or once a day. I'm choosing once a week here. You go ahead, you hit backup, and it'll, it'll save all the things that you've done that are cataloged in Photo Raw. That's something people have been requesting. It's nice to see it incorporated you know, another thing that's, that's really nice is the incorporation of no noise AI. So, you know, here's a photo that I captured really late. It was almost blue hour driving back to our hotel in Gardner when we were in Yellowstone a couple of years ago, Rick LePage and I, and we saw this mom and baby bear. And I had my D500, uh, they were quite a ways away. I shot this, let's look at info here. ISO 
8,800 with my D500. I have my 500 PF Nikkor lens and I put a 1.4 teleconverter, which put it at a 700 millimeter F8 wide open. You know, it was just to try to get a shot. And I got this one with the baby bear's face. It's nothing to, to write home about, but you know, if you zoom in and you really have a look, it's extremely noisy. It's cropped a little bit too. Um, so, you know, let, let's just have a look here. If I'm in here in edit and I go down into noise and sharpening, all right? So we jump into noise and sharpening and you're in the classic noise reduction and sharpening mode where you've got noise reduction and sharpening. You know, I've always said there are two sides of a coin. You blur fine detail to reduce noise and then you need to sharpen the image carefully to get it back that detail. Well, instead, let's just jump into no noise AI. And up comes our familiar dialogue for those who've, tr who've tried this out. And boom, wow, pretty darn incredible. Right off the bat there, you know, I can drag this little slider and see what no noise AI is doing. We're sitting here at, uh, I think, 100% right now. You know, and the thing I love in no noise AI is this enhanced detail slider. So I can enhance details and you'll start to see it starts to get really crunchy and looks over sharpened and edgy, you get artifacts. Um, or, which is something that I, I often complain that I find Topaz Denoise does a little too much, a little over sharpening, which can lead to artifacts in your image. Well, you can dial that down to where, oh, you know, we're starting to, to lose detail to the noise reduction. So where do I want to set that line as I look at this image at 100%? You know, I, I tend to, to avoid that over sharpening effect. I'd rather do that. To the, to the potential detriment of a little bit of detail in my image. I just don't like that jaggy over-processed look. You know, and now, you know, let's back out to 50% on this image and just slide our, wow. That's a huge difference. That takes an image from unusable, and you know, I'm sure there's no way I could have done noise reduction to bring detail back like that. That's pretty amazing. I just go ahead and click done. And you know, one thing that I think is really nice about incorporating it into Photo Raw's engine is that you know my biggest complaint about taking a raw file and editing it in say uh, DxO Pure Raw or Topaz Denoise or No Noise AI is that you're taking a raw image and you're putting it through that company's processor and getting a new image out that's something slightly different. In this case, you're just using you're you're an on one user. You're using Photo Raw. It's interpolating the data and putting it through its raw processor anyway. So now we're just adding that power of no noise AI into our chosen raw processor. All of a sudden you get the benefit of that. All right, I got a few images here uh, from Olympic National Park, the same trip with my kids, my kids' first backpacking trip up on the northwest coast of Olympic National Park. And, and uh, I have this image here. It was smoky, hazy day on the Hood Canal driving home from Olympic National Park after our backpacking trip. And I got Pike standing here in the water. You know, bland day, cute picture of Pike. Well, I, I just thought I'd run that through on one's new sky replacement software. And I think most of you know, I'm not the biggest proponent on earth of sky replacements. You know, I do it occasionally in my images. But I just thought I'd test how well does this work? I know a lot of people love it. So I go ahead in here and I was really quite blown away. You know, I jump in here, I've got sky swap AI and it's kind of automatically selected the sky. I'll show you, there, there's another thing in here. You can say um, <clears throat> here, uh, mask, mask sky. You can go ahead and click that and it will create a sky mask like it's done right here. Now it's all, not always, it's going to blend. It's not going to hit the edges perfectly. It kind of does a little bit of selection of foreground and background blended together, which makes it not work very well, just like Photoshop for doing night sky star replacements because you'll get stars blended into the foreground, but it does a pretty good job in daylight images. Um, and, and I'll show you what I'm talking about here. So, you know, you can go in here, what category do you want to work with? Well, I, I've got the latest sky pack that Rick and I put in the, uh, the latest photo kit that we did on the Palouse, working the landscape. And we've got a whole bunch of images in here. Now, obviously a sunset sky is never going to look good blended into this midday image. And you can see where, you know, some of that sky is being blended into the foreground of the lake. But if I come down and I scroll through all these different skies, I can get a midday sky. Rick had some really nice midday skies. You know, and I could, I could click around and try some of those. That looks 
pretty darn good, doesn't it? You know, <clears throat> maybe I look at another one that has a little more directional light in it, <clears throat> like that one. That also looks really nice. That's about the right time of day. I feel as if the clouds are maybe just a little bit, uh, a little bit dark. Nah, you know what? I like it better. I think number five. We'll go with number five here. We're gonna click on that. Oh, I hit blur, didn't I? I want to reset that. No blur. I actually clicked that slider on my way out of that dialog. All right. So that's just the start. We've chosen our sky pack that I imported in the extras, and I've chosen the Palouse skies. And now I can choose whether or not to flip this whole thing horizontally, right? Right now it looks like there's more directional light coming into the left side of Pike's head and more directional light coming into the right side of the clouds. They're brighter on the right side and shadowed on the left, and that looks wrong to the eye. Just that simple click of this, whoop, all of a sudden now the angle of light is more similar. The clouds are getting hit from the left, his head's getting hit from the left with that sort of semi-directional light. I can choose to shift the horizon around a little bit. Uh, you don't want to go do that much, but you know, you could, you could play around with it if you wanted to. I'm lining it up right about like that. Um, we can take the opacity of the sky down just to blend it in a little bit to that kind of hazy background that we have before. Just you know, you could go from the haze to 100%, and I'd say just make big movements of this slider until it looks good to you. Um, the fade, the edge. These are edge refinement tools. You can sort of take it, see how that's fading it into your image. Just big, make big movements of that slider watching your screen and hone into where it looks good to you. Same thing with shift edge. Shift edge is just an edge refinement tool. If you make big movements, you'll see what it's doing there. It's just kind of a edge fade in. Looks a lot better here, particularly on the lake uh, edge, having done that. Scale just makes the clouds bigger or smaller. I liked them how we started. Um, warmth. Warmth is going to warm the clouds up if you want. Cool the clouds down a little bit if you want. They were pretty good to start with. I'm not going to do much different there. Same thing with brightness. You can brighten and darken them. I thought they looked great right off the get-go. Blur, I'm not going to mess with. Haze is a slider. I don't like to touch very often and not move it much if I do. Foreground lighting, you can work around with some of the things about the foreground. In this case, I feel like we're looking pretty good. But this, this little guy here, reflection, is super cool. I turn that on, all of a sudden the clouds are reflecting on the water. And I can, I can sort of make it more, which looks fake to me, or I can just fade it into where it's natural looking, but now all of a sudden you've got some blue reflected in the water. And look how it isn't doing it on Pike. Pretty darn cool. And I can shift it vertically, sort of out of the scene and back down to where it looks about right to me for the scene that I'm working with. And all of a sudden we've gone from that to that. And I gotta say, that was pretty painless and simple. I, I've gotta say, impressive. Uh, I, I find it pretty darn cool. You know, and while we're at it here, I'll just show you really fast. I'll jump back and edit this image one more time. Another cool thing that they've added is if you're in the masking tools here, you got your masking brush that we're all used to. You've got the graduated mask that you can drop in, you know, like a graduated filter that's a line across the, the image. You've got AI masking. And you got this new line mask tool, which for people who are, you know, Photoshop aficionados or have used Photoshop, it's a lot like the polygonal um, selection tool in Photoshop. You can, you can draw lines in your image. And you could even drop a point in and kind of curve that line and create shapes and mask those shapes in and out. This can be really handy when you have a straight line like that Lakeshore. Um, so just, you know, kind of a cool tool. The um, I can get rid of each point that I put in there with undo. That's control Z that I'm hitting, command Z for the Mac. So another nice little add-on. Um, I'll just say that between adding no noise and some of this more um, more finite masking tools that, you know, working with night images is a really, really cool thing. Now you can go in and do all the denoise work that you want right on the raw file, non-destructively, and you can blend, you know, foregrounds and backgrounds. Right here I've got this image that I blended this star-stacked portrait of... Um, 
of the Big Dipper. This is one that I use in my Milky Way course. I show how to do this both in Photoshop and on One Photo Raw. But I must say that when you're bringing in, you know, both layers here into Photo Raw's editor, it lets you raw process, you know, your foreground or your, your star image independently from your foreground image and do noise reduction using that automated AI, denoise AI in your foreground if you'd like to and do all of the basic tone and color work on either one of these layers. You know, let, let's say we wanted to work on the foreground and just boost the exposure of it. Well, you know, there we go. I don't necessarily want to do that. But everything's re-editable after the fact. You do your blending, you do your masking, and all of a sudden you can continue to work on those layers as raw files. There are the two raw files blended. Uh, and just preserved for you to uh, to work with. So pretty cool stuff. You know, the final the final little note I'll hit is say you know we want to export a couple things. They've really done some cool work in the export um, department. There are all these new, very very uh, nice to use options when you're exporting, uh, and you can save presets and edit those presets. So that every time you just click on that, all of a sudden that's what you're going to be doing. You know, uh, I'm turning it off. It asks if I've changed settings and whether or not I, not I want to save them. I click and turn it on. All of a sudden, those photos would automatically go to my social media folder in Dropbox. It's 2,500 pixel JPEGs um, with uh, sharpening for the screen at a low intensity. It's really, really nice. As you run through, you can even select multiple presets and export the files to multiple places at the same time at different sizes and different settings. Um, pretty cool stuff. All right, so I gotta say, um, you know, the Photo Raw 2022, not disappointing. I'm, I'm pretty darn pleased with the integration and seamlessness with which they've added these new features uh, to the good old Photo Raw that we're used to working in. And it really does let you work with your file data in a raw format non-destructively from sort of, you know, cradle to export. Let's put it that way. All right, so there you have it. Some pretty cool new features and enhancements in Photo Raw 2022. You know, if you're interested in purchasing that, I got a link right in this video's description. Click the title or show more. You can also find the Milky Way course that I described. That's also at hudsonhenry.com slash Milky Way. Um, links to all the gear that I use always are in that video description as well as hudsonhenry.com slash ATS links. And make sure that you sign up for the office hours. We're gonna be going through your images, talking about them, Woody, Rick, David, uh, Darren, and I, and that's October 26th, 10 a.m. Pacific. You can sign up at hudsonhenry.com slash office hours. Submit your image and also your questions for that big photo group meeting. All right, so I hope everyone is staying safe, enjoying sort of the end of summer, beginning of fall. The colors are out there. Kids are back to school. Lots of fun stuff. Hope you're finding ways to be creative while staying safe. We'll see you next week.